Good morning, friends. It's uh, Saturday morning, June 4th. I got an email from a friend the other day. His name is Stephen. He had some specific questions he wanted to ask, so I thought I'd do a little short video about it. So, here it is. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick. Hello there. Well, it's kind of a ugly cloudy day as you can see here today i think uh monte is getting into its winter season but anyway i got an email like i said from a gentleman named steven he asked me some questions financial legal and insurance and then some general questions and i thought i'd take this opportunity to answer your questions steven i want to do the best i can here his first question does ecuador require you to sign a and I'll spell it out for you, F-A-T-C-A, a fat K, fat K. I'm not sure if I know what that is, but I do know that I had to fill out a form, IRS form 8938 and IRS form FinCEN form 114. One is the one that you have to disclose that you have uh, financial accounts in a foreign country. They ask you a lot of questions about it what's it for of course you know you know what they're getting to they want to know how much you can they can tax you off of it and the other one is fence in form 114 i think that's just an information only form to let the irs know that you're in another country i don't remember really remember specifically what they were i just know that i filled them out and sent them in. I actually did it through my tax program, which is kind of kind of answer the next question. Uh, he's, he, your second question, are you using an Ecuadorian or a U.S.-based accountant, given you have to file two returns, Ecuador and USA? Well, in the first place, I didn't have to file two returns, Stephen. I, I don't make that much money. I'm not that wealthy. Uh, I didn't have to file an Ecuadorian tax return because I didn't make enough money here. You have to make over ten thousand dollars, I believe. I did have to file an IRS or a USA tax return, and I did all of it through uh, a program called Free Tax USA. I've been using them for years. This is not an endorsement of them. It's just one that I use and have used for a long time. They have all my records and all that kind of stuff. That I would hire an Ecuadorian-based accountant, unless I owned a business here or I had a lot of money. I think I would rather just go through a law firm and have it done that way. I don't know how I feel about accountants here. I, I'm sure they're just fine. To answer your question, no, I'm just strictly, strictly sticking with the USA uh, accounting software that I use. His third question, sorry about this question, but given my age this year, 63, it's pertinent. Have you prepared a will in Ecuador? No. If so, how much did it cost? I don't know what they cost. I'm sure you get done, get one done really cheap here. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to say cheap anymore. I'm supposed to say affordable. I'm sure you can get one. There are law firms here. There's facilitators here that are retired attorneys that do legal work like that. They, I'm sure you can get a will done here for pennies on the dollar compared to what it would cost in the United States. I don't have a will. Hell, I don't own anything. I don't have any anybody I don't have any heirs I guess that's is that the right word I don't have any heirs I don't have anybody that's gonna want anything that I own I got some sisters I don't think they would want I mean you can take everything I own and put it in three suitcases when I die I don't give a damn what happens to my money anything I don't care I'll be dead what am I going I mean I'm 70 years old if I had kids and grandkids that'd be a different story but in my case I don't I don't have all that now this next question, I'm not sure I can answer. Give them question number three. Do you have named beneficiaries for your CDs? How does dying affect withdrawal of the CDs? Well, I'll tell you one thing. When you die, you can't withdraw them. I know that for sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I finished the question. By an executor of the will or trustee? I guess it would be an executor of the will. Are there penalties? There again, I'll be dead. Let them penalize all they want. If I was leaving my money to somebody through a will, I'm sure there probably will be some kind of penalty. Who cares? Why do people concern themselves over this kind of stuff? When you're dead, you're dead. And if you don't have any, well, I know I'm taking the wrong approach to this. 
I'm sorry, Stephen. It makes it sound like I'm mocking you and uh, I'm not taking your question seriously. I, I am taking your question seriously. I didn't have a beneficiary for my CDs. I don't think that they even allow it, but I'm going to have to look into that. And I'll and when I get to when I get an answer for that, I'll do. I'll put it in my next TAT, my next this and that. I don't think when I bought my CDs, I don't think I was allowed to even list a beneficiary. And I, but I don't know why. That's a good question for Javier. I'll have to ask him that. I, I will definitely get back to you on that. Number five, given you switch health coverage from the state to private, would you be willing to discuss your plan's coverage, premium, deductible, etc.? If so, that would be really terrific. Thanks. Please note that your, your video that you stated it was $98 with a $5,000 deductible, but what was the scope of the coverage? Upper limits. Do you prepay and then you get reimbursed, etc.? If, it, if since I have private insurance, if I go to a private hospital, Confia Med will take care of everything for me. I won't pay anything except my deductible. You're right. I have a $5,000 deductible, and you're right. My monthly fee is $98, and I thank you for the backup warning for right in the middle of my video. So what's new? <laughs> you know, insurance is a big subject here. A lot of people talk about it here. I originally started out with the IESS, and then I got talked into buying a private policy, and I don't know that I'm better off or not. I know one thing, the only pre-existing condition that I have is high blood pressure, and I'll tell you this, the negative side to having private coverage that I have right now is that for two years, I'm not covered for anything that's related to high blood pressure. Is that good or bad? I, I you know, it's like I told the insurance guy, if I have a freaking heart attack, they're going to blame it on high blood pressure. Come on, we know how this works. As far as what's covered, I mean, I'm covered for everything that has to do with my health. I mean, I, I don't think I have cosmetic coverage in, in this, you know. I have the policy, but it's all in Spanish, and I don't know what is what. Maybe I should have it interpreted. Deductibles, yeah, my, you know, you said it there. You, you, my policy is $98 a month and 5000 deductible. Question number six. Given the rampant inflation, USA, UK, Australia, Europe, et al., have you noticed price increases in Ecuador? If so, what is the current rate of increase? When I came here, according to what I heard from a million JP, I think it was, that inflation was somewhere near zero percent here. Then I heard from another source that it was like between zero and one percent. I read in Coinca High Life last month that right now inflation here in Ecuador is 2.9 percent. I haven't seen any increases in anything, to tell you the truth. I've heard that the taxis are trying to get an increase in their rates. I, I don't, I, the food still pretty much costs the same. My budget is pretty much the same as it is today as it was when I came here and I'm really not spending that much more money. I know one thing, beer and wine is expensive. If you like to drink lots of beer and wine, you may not want to come here. <laughs> well, they, they, no, you can't use that for an excuse. So in his general questions, when you chose Ecuador, did you consider and compare alternative destinations? Just curious, like using an Excel spreadsheet with categories, pluses and minuses, pros and cons, etc. Cost of living, weather, crime index, or was it simply like closing your eyes and placing a pen in the map? Viola, it's Ecuador. And I'll tell you, a lot of the YouTube videos that I watched, I think I was dissuaded by. I don't think that they were, I think some of them were a little disingenuous. They didn't tell the whole truth. They just, I heard a lot of the good, but none of the bad, you know? And that's one thing, if you know about my channel, I will tell you about the bad. Like trying to do a video on a jackhammer going off in the background. I just now noticed. That's what I've been hearing for the last 10 minutes. Hope it's not too bad for the video. If it is, I'll redo it. Plus and minuses. I didn't really do any plus and minuses, but I could probably do some now. Maybe I should do a video about that. But I mean, I did look into, yeah, definitely study the cost of living. You know, I studied the weather a little bit. I came from Arizona where it was just hot, hot and dry. Wintertime was kind of like California, cool and dry. Crime index, I don't know what crime index means, but Crime. There's crime here just like there is in the United States. I think it's worse in the United States. I know I saw yesterday that in 2022, 
there were 223 mass shootings in the United States. I haven't heard of any mass shootings here in Ecuador except the ones in the prison where the, all the convicts are killing each other. Thank God for prisons. Most of the crime that you hear about here is drug related, so stay away from the drug related neighborhoods and don't get involved in drugs here. You'll be okay. There's petty crime here. I've been a victim of petty crime twice since I've been here, but I'm still alive. Petty crime. There are people, a lot of people here is fighting to feed their families, and they'll steal your watch and beat you up. I've been told they'll kill you for your watch. Best thing to do when somebody wants to rob you is give them everything you got, and then go on down the road. Probably be walking. I've been lucky so far. I had a guy want to pull a knife on me in Cuenca, and I had a guy approach me down the street here, and he noticed I had pepper spray in my hand, and I think that's what uh, persuaded him to just keep on going. Follow me though for a long ways, but I think a lot of the petty crime that takes place here is probably brought on by stupidity, people just being in the wrong place. And you know, I've done a couple videos on this. If you go into a neighborhood and you don't see anybody around, you're probably in trouble. And when somebody tells you, like a taxi driver tells you, don't go down that street even in the daytime, don't go down that street. Simple as that, you can pretty much avoid the petty crime. Don't leave your cell phone sitting on the edge of the table in the restaurant. Don't hang your purse over the back of your chair. If somebody wants to rob you, give them what they want, and you won't be a victim. Kind of be a victim, but you'll be a, a live victim. Number eight, you had, you had pondered moving to Cuenca, so would you still do that even if you didn't have a girlfriend given your satisfaction with your dentist and doctors there in Monta. Such things are hard to come by in my opinion. One gets settled, one gets settled, some basic essentials can provide not only a level of familiarity and security, but they also reduce levels of anxiety. I would love to go to Cuenca, but I just don't think I can deal with the altitude. If it wasn't for the altitude, I'd be there right now. Definitely like Cuenca. Cuenca's quieter, cleaner, prettier, a lot more food choices to choose from, a lot more music choices, lots of things to do. Beautiful malls, beautiful countryside, beautiful scenery. It's like paradise. Maybe I could get used to the altitude if I just gave it a chance, and maybe I still will someday, who knows? But right now, no, I'm not. I noticed in your email you said, I have watched 99% of your videos and look forward to them. So if I have repeated questions, I do apologize. Perhaps, though, your opinion or insight may have changed. Well. 99%? That's it? Do we need to talk about the 100% rule here, folks? If you don't watch 100% of my videos, you're missing out. In my humble opinion. 99%. What an insult. That's okay. You are you seem like a good guy, Sam. You're awful young. 63 years old. You know, it's not even time for you to retire yet. Number nine. As there are many people who move to Ecuador on their own and seek accommodation just for themselves, you never hear of anyone looking for housemates to share places with. Not necessarily to reduce costs, but more so for company and in case of emergencies, especially as we age. So do you know of any site where people advertise for housemates? Is there even such a thing? Yeah, it's called Facebook. Get on Facebook. There's several Facebook, Monta, Ecuador related Facebook pages. Mark Bradbury's Facebook page, I'll put a link in the description. There's several, I'll put all the links in the description for you to see them. The best thing there, there are lots of people here that follow, like Mark Bradbury's page, I think he has 5,000 members that are here in Ecuador. Maybe there's a bunch in the U.S., but, and they're, you know, maybe coming down. These people are more than willing to share information, and you probably would, you probably could find a housemate. I'm sure there, there's, it's available. I mean, I think it's a good idea if you can stand to have a housemate. I know a couple right across the street from me here that live in a housemate type situation. A guy and a girl, super nice people, and they seem to get along just fine. But yeah, Facebook is your answer. I hate to say it, but that really is. There's no, I don't know of any dedicated, you know, roommate website or anything like that. Facebook. Last but not least, so given your year, 14 months in Ecuador, do you feel you made the right choice? Not necessarily that you shouldn't have left the U.S. USA, but more so that you chose Ecuador or any other place. Fill in the blank. Mexico, Colombia, Panama, Bulgaria. Yes and no. I mean, I, you know, I didn't come to Ecuador to retire and spend the rest of my life here. I may go back to the United States and start a business. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know that I'm here 
for six more months to get some more dental work done. And then I thought about going to Mexico. I know this is probably a shocker for some of my subscribers here, but this channel is not about Don Shader moving to Ecuador and spending the rest of his life here. It's about my experiences and what I've gone through and what I've been through and why I do it and, you know, retiring and living in a foreign country. There's a lot to love about Ecuador, but there's a lot that I don't like, too. I don't like the noise. There's a lot of cultural things that I don't like, but I can't change any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I looked at Colombia, I looked at Vietnam, I looked at Thailand, Mexico. I have some friends that live in a city about 100 miles north of Mexico City called Cadetro, and they live there. And I've thought about going there for a while. I've thought about going back to the United States and run a business for two or three years and raise a bunch of money, come back here and hopefully keep the business running there with some dedicated and reliable employees and come back here and buy a condo here and just retire finally and live here on the beach with my beautiful girlfriend. Maybe by then she'll, you know, consider living with me. <laughs> by now it's hard enough just to get her to come over. I hope that answers your questions. Thank you for taking the time to consider this, Don. Keep up the great work. And if I do make it there, the beers are on me. <laughs> Damn right they will be. Uh, thank you for, uh, and, and for your generosity of time and spirit. But above all else, your frank, earnest demeanor is so refreshing. Several things you have said have rung true. Live long and prosper. So, there you go, Stephen. Please keep in touch, all right? Keep in touch with me. You have my email address. It's in the description. Let me know what you're doing. If you want me to elaborate more on some of these questions, I'll do that for you. But for now, that's the best I got. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Ciao.